Welcome to Kitchen Counseling. I'm Chef Tom. I'm your motorcycle riding holistic chef. Today I got my good friend Ralph with me today. You might remember him from the Bikers Barbecue and Brew segment that we did a while back. Uh, did you bring us any brew today? Oh, uh, no. I... Oh, man, no brew? Oh. I'm sorry. I, I didn't have any. Left. Okay. All I right. drank it all. <laughs> that does not surprise me. <laughs> What we're going to do today is we're just kind of simplifying everything down today. So we're going to do a variation on a chicken wing recipe. Now, wonder why we're doing a variation on a chicken wing recipe? Because chicken wings are overrated? No, no. Chicken wings are great. They're great. And I love a lot of people's comfort food and stuff. I wanted to go down the path of doing some comfort food stuff, especially during this time while we're dealing with this, you know, the global pandemic, everybody is a little bit out of sorts. Depression levels are up a little bit more. We got to find ways in order to manage our stress and whatnot. And comfort foods is one of those things. It's not the thing. It is one of those things. So I wanted to go down the comfort food path. And one of the other things that comes out of all of this is that whether you're feeding a family or whether you're on your own, everybody's budgets are tight and everybody's trying to stretch their monies as far as they can go. So, I went to the grocery store to buy the stuff for this recipe and the chicken wings were like $3.99 a pound. And then they had drumsticks for 99 cents a pound. And I'm just like, oh, it's a no brainer. That is a no brainer. I was like the drumsticks, man. I mean, I love the drumsticks, yes. right? Yes. So I'm like, I just cut my grocery bill by 75% by switching it up a little bit. We're still doing the same ingredients. We're going to make the sauce and do all that the same way and everything. But we're just using drumsticks today instead of chicken wings. No, I, I like the whole yeah. idea of Drum. Drums. <laughs> Drum legs. So either way, this is still a really great party food. And it's actually a little bit more robust meal if you're serving it for dinner. You can do it with a little side salad or a side pasta or whatever. And you get yourself a meal for your family and whatnot. So we're going to go through that process. And the one thing I need to let you know, this recipe from start to finish, this takes about an hour and 10 minutes. And most people are like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, I want something that I can do in 30 minutes or less. I need to get it out on the table for the family, blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff. The cool thing about this recipe mm. is we can split this one into two, all right? There's basically six steps. That's it. That's all there is to this. We can do the first three steps like a day ahead, put it in the fridge. It's what I call prepping it, getting it ready. And then the day of the eating day, which I like to call it, could be game day, could be just your meal, whatever. The eating day is you're gonna have the ability to finish this up, just refresh it up, finish it off, and then 20 minutes, you got a meal. I like that. Right? So that's what we're gonna yeah. do today. Yeah. I'm gonna walk through those steps. Like I said, there's only six steps. We did three of them yesterday. We're gonna walk through those first three steps, and then we're gonna start on the process for the last three steps, and we're gonna do that right here, and then we're gonna taste it, and we're gonna do some eating at the end. God, I hope so. <laughs> That's why I got you here. I got four pounds of chicken. Away. I swear I'll, I'll bring more beer next time. More beer next time. Okay, maybe I'll do more next time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what you're going to need for this recipe, basically you're going to need a nice, big, large mixing bowl. Okay? That's one of the things. We're going to use it a couple of different places here. Then you're going to need a baking sheet tray with sides. And then you're going to need a baking rack. So you're going to put that into your baking tray and that's going to allow you to place your chicken on here and all the drippings and stuff fall down and the, the airflow that goes around all the chicken is what's going to keep it crispy and nice just like if you if you did deep frying for it we're just not doing the deep frying we're baking it so that's a little bit better right than, than like just sitting on the pan because then you yeah. get stuck yeah if you sit it Lose right on if you sit it right on the uh, sheet tray yeah, they're going to be sitting in the juices, and you're going to—it's going to be soggy, and they stick, and when you pull them, you lose some of the meat, and all this kind of stuff. This way, everything drips down on through onto the pan. You can pull the chicken right off. We can sauce it, and then we can boom. We can have, we can have some good chicken. Sounds good. All right. So that is where we're headed. So I'm going to just step you through the steps we did yesterday. Now I did this yesterday, just like I said, you can do this a day ahead of time. We're going to step you through the first three steps. They're real basic, and then we're going to actually finish it off right here on the show. So the first one, you're going to take your big mixing bowl, and then you're going to put about a half a cup of a cooking oil in it. Now I happen to have canola oil. That's what I was using today. The main thing you're using for this, because you're actually cooking it for a long period of time at 400 degrees in the oven, you need an oil that has a high smoke point. It's not going to burn. If you burn it, you just ruin your whole dish. And you need something neutral. 
So if you got like sapphire oil or uh, even a vegetable oil, whatever, those mm -hmm. are all going to be good for something like this. I would stay away from oils that have lots of flavor. Yeah. I typically use olive oil in a lot of what I do, but that's going to actually intermix with some of the other flavors we have here. And it doesn't have a high enough smoke point, so it's going to actually burn, and the chicken's going to burn. So we're going to stick with the canola oil today. So we got our half cup of uh, uh, canola oil in here. We're just throwing all the chicken right in here. That's just to cut, coat it. Yes, we're just coating it. So we're going to do a little flip just to coat it all. We're going to get it all nice and coated, so that's going to help it crisp up in the oven. And then we're going to place that chicken just right onto the rack. Nice rack. <laughs> I have never had that <laughs> said to me. All right? Yeah. Come on. Just say, that's really clean and everything. I, that's it, all I meant. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Ah. I take pride in my sanitary measures. <laughs> we're placing the chicken on the rack. And just station it all in here so we get that nice airflow and we got everything going on in there. And then we're going to throw it in the oven. And it's going to bake on 400 degrees, like I said, for 50 minutes. Now, the nice thing about baking is that it is a slow process. And with chicken, it takes a while to cook. You don't have to sit around and wait for it. So it's not like 50 minutes I'm sitting in the kitchen just waiting for that to happen. You can pop that in there in the oven. You can go do something else. You want to go visit, you know, a family member or whatever. You want to watch a TV show. You want to do some chores or whatever. Mow the lawn. You got 50 minutes. Make right? a bed. So go do something else. Come back in the 50 some minutes. Laundry. Have yourself a timer. When it goes off, check it. Now, what you're looking for when you check it is that you want it to be crispy. You want to be golden brown and crispy. Now, most ovens should be right around 50 minutes. If yours is a little bit off or whatever, you might need a few more minutes. At that point, if you are actually at the 50 minutes and you're needing to put it back in just to get that crispiness, then you basically want to hang around there because it's going to not take very long and you don't want to burn it. So you're going to wait till you get that nice golden brown crispiness. You're going to take it out of the oven. You're going to set it off to the side. You're just going to let it cool for a little bit. Put it in an airtight container. Stick it in the fridge, and now it's all prepped and ready to go for game day or eating day. Or just an overall fun day. Or overall fun day. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't need you don't need to worry about a football or anything, just to hang out right. and have something good. Yeah. One step I did forget, as you after you coated that with oil and you placed all your chicken on here, you're gonna sprinkle it, season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. That's all you got. It's oil, salt, and pepper on this, it's going in the oven for 50 minutes, boom, it's done. All right. So now we are at the stage of game day. So we are going to get this ready. So I've got my chicken out here already that I've already got done. And as you can see, I'll show you a couple pieces here. Got a nice little crispy golden brown. We're just placing this back on the same rack. And what we're going to do is we're just going to warm this up. Now, since this is already cooked and it's already Completely done. I'm going to let you put some of that on there while yeah. I tell these folks here. Since it's already done, we're not trying to cook it anymore. Okay. What we want to do is we just want to bring it up to where it's warm. So I'm going to set the oven about 375, a little bit lower in temperature. And we're going to stick it in there for about 15 minutes and just get it up. Now, while that's cooking and whatnot, we're going to go ahead and make the sauce. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So once you get that on there, we'll get this thing in the oven. I might have to eat one of these. Yeah, you better. I mean, before you stick it in the oven. <laughs> uh, not, not yet. It's not ready. We got to get the good stuff on there now. All right. Beautiful. And bam, voila. So now we got our chicken here. It's all ready to go into the oven. So we're going to throw it in the oven. It'll wash up a little bit. Set our timer for 15 minutes, and now we're just bringing that back up to temperature, all right? So while that is working, we are going to do what I call the day of eating, the day of eating part. This is our 20 minutes, okay? So while that's cooking, we're going to make our sauce, okay? So the steps four through six in this recipe, and if you need the recipe, you email me at yoursoulpath.net, and I'll get the recipe out to you. Um, we are going to put our ingredients together for our sauce. So our sauce contains, we got one cup of melted butter. Butter. Got butter, gotta have butter. That's two sticks. For those that don't do this regularly. We have one and a half cups of a grated Parmesan cheese. 
mice. There we go. We've got eight teaspoons of a minced garlic. Gotta have the garlic. Gotta have the garlic. Oh yeah. And we've got two teaspoons of a red pepper flake. It's just gonna give it a little bit of spice, but it's not gonna be too overwhelming. Now we just give this a little bit of stir, get all the ingredients to meld together. And once I get it all stirred up, I'll show you what it looks like. Because this is where our warmed up chicken is going to go in. We're going to sauce it, just doing a little toss like we did yesterday with the, with the oil. Just to get it coated. And then to finalize it, we're going to throw it back in the oven on broil and give it a little extra crispy just for a couple of minutes. So, there is our little garlic, parmesan, and butter sauce. That looks good. Yeah, it smells awesome. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, too bad we don't have smell o vision. Smell o vision. Do you yeah. work on that? Got it. Well, you know, I it's like a little scratch and sniff. You, you know? gotta talk to the computer to <laughs> that and make all those things. Uh, but that's, that's what's sorely missing smell o vision. Smell o vision. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, people go nuts if they can smell what you do. Yeah, that's, tell them. Just, just tell them. Well, I get that a lot when I'm here cooking in the house. Yes. People come in, they're like, oh, my God, that smells so good. What are you doing? And I'm just like, I just started. You know, it's just like, you know, we've got a little bit of garlic and onion going on right now. But yeah, it layers and throughout, and it just permeates through the whole house. But that's how. That's a smell of love. It is the smell of love. <laughs> and you tell what, it's a sense memory for me. Yeah. Because when I, growing up as a child. Yeah. I lived in the household it was italian household yes it was every sunday mom made her sauce we had spaghetti and meatballs every sunday after church i would wake up sunday morning to the smell just the pork and the garlic and the, and the onion cooking and that was my that's my sense memory so that yeah. drives me back so a lot of these things are sense memories and they're, we get attached to those and those actually start becoming our comfort foods because they're attached to some emotional connection all right. And so that's kind of what this is all about right now. Yeah. Is that I wanted to go into some comfort foods and the comfort foods for everybody is a little bit different. All right. I have my own. You have yours. Everybody has their, their own different comfort foods. Yeah. So that connects you to that um, emotional connection that will actually help lift your spirits and help you help get out of that depression and stuff and all that. So what uh, just out of curiosity, what's your comfort foods? I like all kinds of things, uh, but one of the, the go-tos for me for comfort, especially lately, is I love breakfast foods. Breakfast oh foods to me are like, it's, I sometimes have breakfast for dinner. Oh yeah. Because I'm well, a big guy. Yeah, so there's a sandwich that I like to make and it's it's got some Mexican flair to it. Um, oh, I usually get some Dave's Killer Bread, wheat, or you can get whatever kind you want. Yeah. I, I start off with that. Okay. I just like the way they make their breads. So I toast that. I butter it. I put a little garlic salt on there, so it's essentially garlic bread. Um, but then I go ahead and I get my skillet and I put spinach. You get a big handful of spinach, put that down. Now, yeah, I'll, and I'll then you know that down. much spinach at the end. You know? Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Which keep going. Keep going. Yeah, so I'll break that down and stir it up, and then I chop up a clove and then throw that in there. And then, um, what else do I put in there? Clove of garlic. Yeah, chop up a clove of garlic, yeah. spinach, and then pork tree oh. and I mix that all together oh and it just you can start smelling it it's like you can smell the garlic you can smell the tree so spinach is spinach but I, I kind of do because it, then it's kind of healthy <laughs> <laughs> you gotta so, do whatever makes it feel good for you yeah right? so then I get my bread out and I get a half avocado and I'll slice that and then I'll, I'll just start chopping it up in the, in the shell I'll just mash it up throw some uh, Himalayan salt some pepper, maybe some garlic, depends on how I'm feeling. And then I scoop that off on the bread and spread it out there. I throw, I throw a couple eggs in the skillet, cook those up, fry them. So the center is not completely done. It's got a little run. You don't want like a lot because it gets messy. Oh, yeah. So I got a little bit of running. I mean, yeah. I, I like yeah, to yeah. put the egg on different things like the burgers and stuff. You oh, just get a little a bit of the yolk. Yeah, but you don't want it just dousing it. You well, I've had it go like, <laughs> you're like, oh, I mean, I've, yeah, it's horrible. 
So I get the bread, I put the egg on there, I'll throw the chorizo mixture that I got on there with the spinach and mm -hmm. the garlic and all that. And then I'll throw some Mexican cheese on top of that. Oh my God. And it's all hot, so the cheese starts melting. And then the other side's got the avocado. Oh. I'll slap that over. Holy moly. Grab that, grab a big old paper towel, because it gives a little mercer. <clears throat> and then I'll, yeah, get rid of my cup of coffee, and it's like, I'm watching a little show on TV and start eating it, and oh it's God. just, yeah. That sounds awesome. Oh, it's really I good. Mean, we might have it's to good. do that on the show. You have to show me how you do that, because that, that sounds like something we got to do. I, I'm no chef, but I like to experiment in the kitchen. And that's what this is all about. Yeah. It's just experiment. That's a comfort for me. But you were talking about breakfast, and it made me think, I mean, oh, my God, it yeah. took me back again to my childhood. I mean, my dad's side of the family, they were all about breakfast. I mean, my dad was oh. the Irish side of the family. My uncles, my dad, my brother, they're all big breakfast people. They love their breakfast. His brother, Mike, okay, this guy, he talked to me about some comfort food. He's got a great recipe for, I uh, uh, can't even say it, biscuits and gravy. Oh, my God. And he uses yeah, like, he loves his biscuits and yeah, gravy. He does. Yeah, yeah. He, he uses like Campbell's uh, mushroom soup and spices or whatever, and then he'll get like Jimmy Dean sausage and cook that up and mix it together. And, Get your, you know, you get the biscuits that you buy that you smack on the counter and just <laughs> throw them in the thing. <laughs> but I'm telling you what, I, I'm like, what's this guy doing? And he whipped it out, and I'm like, well, this is pretty damn good. Yeah. So, yeah, Mike. Well, yeah. that, and that's what this is all about. Everybody has their own uh, comfort food connection. Yeah. But the the, the 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 thing that brings it all together all the time is that it is a connection on an emotional level for that individual. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about during these times right now is just to try and find ways to balance our day and keep our stress levels down a little bit, keep the depression away as much as possible. And food is one of those connections that will do that. There are a lot Absolutely. of other things. I mean, I know there's people that, you know, what makes them work, what, what works for them is exercising on a regular basis. So they go out and exercise and that calms them down. For me, I'm more of uh, essential oils and a meditation kind of guy. So I yeah. kind of do that. And my ride and my motorcycle, those are my three things that kind of keep me balanced, you know? Yeah. I have to say that like, especially during these times um, for myself personally, I have felt uh, anxiety yeah. building. Sure. You know, nobody knows what's going to happen. Everybody wants the best and you got fears. You got, you, you, you don't know. And that tends to, to raise levels. Yeah. So absolutely. When you're thinking about comfort foods and stuff like that, that's a helper. And then the meditation part is something that um, I still struggle with, but I'm hoping to get some insight. What I find for, for, for my, my deal is how yeah. I deal with stress instead of just curling up in a ball in a fetal position, you know, sucking my thumb. I, I got to get out and do something. So there's a hill near me. Uh, I live in Menifee. There's a hill with a huge cross on it. And I've been hiking that for a while now, but it, it, that calms me when I'm outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I go up there. It's a great 360. Heck, I go up to Idlewild, go out there, because I love the mountains and I love the trees. Yeah. It's just, I guess, getting in touch with nature. Yeah. Um, getting out and walking and, and getting your blood flowing, because if you're still and you're not doing anything, yeah, the depression just kind of gets heavier and heavier, mm -hmm. it seems like. And, and, for, and like I said, for everyone, it's different. Yeah, More, exactly. Some people really gravitate to nature, and, and that's really their connection. Yeah. Uh, others gravitate to, like, the exercise and just getting those endorphins going and whatnot and just kind of putting that stress away. Uh, meditation is one of mine, and yeah. you mentioned that. I The biggest thing with meditation that I like to tell folks is, like, you don't need to be in a special room with your legs crossed and your fingers up and doing all this kind of stuff. You're, yeah. you're so worried about the process and getting it all just right that you're not benefiting from the meditation. The meditation is all about calming. Yeah. And what I had to start doing is I focus just on my breath. That's it. You focus on your breath. And you can do this anywhere. You can do this in the grocery line. You stand in a long grocery line, you're going to be there for a little bit. You just you're standing there and you start your deep breathing. It's all about the deep breathing. Just letting it out. You will feel your body start to change just by doing that for a minute or two. I've done it when I'm driving. Well, not when I'm driving, but oh, when I, I have stopped at a stoplight, you're going to be there for a minute or two, whatever. I'll take some deep breaths and start to calm down. Do that periodic throughout the day. You don't need a session time in order to calm yourself. You can do this in little bits and pieces throughout your day and focus just on the breath and don't focus on all the extra to make it just right. 
It's got to be right for you. See, here, here's here's the thing too is like Tom mentioning this, you know, it struck a nerve with me because he started talking about it just like today, and um, and I'm going to be getting with him talking about the breathing seriously. I drive a lot in, in the business I do. I, I do a lot of restoration work and I travel from the Inland Empire to San Diego to to uh, LA, wherever the work takes me. And yeah. if anybody is from Southern California and have driven any one of those freeways, you know you're dealing with some wackadoos on the road <laughs> that don't know how to signal. They think it's okay to start shooting YouTube videos while they're driving or yep. talking. They're like, yeah, no, 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 as they're merging it. Yep. And, you know, it's it's basically life or death, and I've watched accidents happen. I mean, it, it, people are up here get a little crazy on the road, mm -hmm. so that is a little stressful. So, I'm I will be talking with him as far as breathing, you know, techniques to help calm myself. Now they're very I, simple. They're just very very simple. What I'm doing here yeah. while he's talking here is that our sauce is because it's a melted butter is starting to harden up a little bit. You can't so, that. As that chicken is getting close, the warming of the chicken will actually help. But I am going to shoot it into the microwave just for a few seconds just to get it nice and soft again so that we can actually cook that chicken well. So go ahead. I didn't mean to no, that's interrupt fine. you, but I, 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 I looked like I was, like, hmm. I was a little uh, distracted and I thought you might be <laughs> wondering, what is he doing? So that's what no, I'm No, I was just going to say, as far as the driving and stuff, I'm, I, I'm definitely not the screamer that, that, that some people are. It's like, you effing son of a bitch! You know, I mean, I I have a friend that does yeah. that sometimes, but um, yeah, I almost had to beat you up. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> I, I remember. I'm like, oh, I'm just watch what I'm what I'm saying. Saying. <laughs> So yeah, so I won't, I won't, uh, you know, I, I won't go too crazy. I mean, the one time I did is is actually over here on the two fifteen. Traffic was bumper yeah. to bumper. Oh, God, it does get that. And way. the person behind us uh, ran into. It. Oh. And I mean, I was. <laughs> I mean, I. Jerk, and wow. and I I was like what, and, and I did. I I got mad and I got out of the car. Yeah, and it was this nurse. And she goes, "Are you okay? I'm so sorry. I looked at my phone." And I'm like, "Oh," and she she said, "I'll I'll give you my name and I'll help you out, whatever." And I, that felt comforting, but I didn't. I was okay. I just a little bit, but that was a and that's it's that a classic example where that level gets high. Yeah, and it, I'm and, pretty passive, and, right, and, so. and taking a couple of deep breaths will actually bring that down. Yeah. The, the biggest thing behind meditation, and that's what I want to tell you folks real fast before this chicken's done. The biggest thing behind meditation is, is a balancing of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. All right. We live in a fight or flight world. So our sympathetic nervous system is, is, is on all the time, stress, but it needs a break. You can't do that all the time. You've got to give it a break. The deep breathing, just the deep breathing itself, not all yeah. the other stuff and everything, just getting into the deep breathing activates the parasympathetic nervous system. Now that actually will help bring your heart rate down. It'll bring your blood pressure down. It'll start doing that. And you do that just for a few minutes, different parts of the day, especially when you get into that fight or flight mode. Yeah. You help balance those two nervous systems. And that's really what. Now I've never heard of those two nervous systems. So see, again, wealth of information. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I could have talked to him a couple of years ago before I started doing the high yeah, well, stuff, but. We'll talk about that and go to all that stuff yeah. before we have some beers next time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. So let me check the chicken. Let's see where we're at. Oh, we got 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and throw wow. this. We throw this in the microwave for like uh, 20 seconds. I will do my best. And we will get this chicken out of here. And now we're going to actually sauce it. We're going to finish it off and we're going to try this out and I'm going to show you the finished product. So that's going to actually be really exciting here. So while we're doing that, let me get some of this cleared off. So we actually have a nice workspace here, and I'm gonna grab that chicken right now. So hang on. All right. I don't usually use a uh, microwave, so I know, I know, I, I know. guess I forgot, I forgot about that. I'm guessing that's too much time on there. I'll get it. Let's see what we got. I don't know. Oh, go check it out and I'll. Oh man, let's, uh, let's start this over. Here. Yeah, it's not going. I was trying to figure it out. Yeah. I don't do good with my. Don't use with my. I really don't. I don't use them too often. But um, all right, that smells good right now. So let me and show that's you just the basics. Yeah, let's show you what we got here. So now we got some nice golden brown crispy chicken here, ready to go. We're gonna get our sauce out of. 
microwave. Should be ready to slide right in here. Do I need to? Yeah, it shouldn't be too hot. It's only 20 seconds in there. <laughs> Kidding. I was gonna say, come on, man. I know I got chef hands and I, had, I don't have I don't have the same uh, uh, feeling in my fingertips as I used to have. You know but. that's true. I, I I spent some time working at a pizza restaurant in my youth. Yeah. It's a huge pizza oven that taken in and out, and after a while, you get used to it. Of course, your hair gets all cinched off, <laughs> but you get used to the heat. It's yep. the weirdest thing. Yes, I, don't, I, do. I don't think I can do that now, but that was, like I said, back in my youth. Yep. But, so uh, what we're doing is we're just throwing our chicken into our sauce here. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, and then we're going to toss. Just give it a good toss all around, get it all kind of nice and coated. If you'll grab those um, hot pads that are behind me and get this hot pad out, pan out of our way. Oh, you're not behind me. They're right here. I was going to say, I think ah, I fooled you. Okay. So while he's doing that, I'm going to show you the chicken here. Go ahead and take that away. I'm going to just throw it over here off to the side. And we're just going to give this a little toss. We're just flipping, flipping, flipping. The sauce is pretty thick. So we want to keep on flipping. And then you got a little spoon, you can give it a little stir. Make sure everything gets some coating on it. And this is all we did yesterday with the oil. We just put the chicken in here. We just gave it a little flip. But it even smells good. I mean, I know you still have to do another process, but I can smell it. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. All that garlic. Yes. All that Parmesan cheese. And uh, the little bit of red pepper flake gives a nice look. And here we go. We got our chicken here. So this is our chicken. We're going to plate this thing up right now so we can show you what that finished product looks like. So we have a couple of plates. We've made a little salad, just a little mixed salad with a mixed green salad. I had a little bit of an avocado lime cilantro dressing oh, a couple days ago. Avocado lime cilantro so, sauce stuff. Yeah, so we just did that up. We're going to throw a couple of these drumsticks on here. Oh, you're killing me. Just like so. We're going to garnish it just with a little bit of the dry Parmesan cheese, just to give it a little bit extra on top. And a little bit of a um, chopped Italian parsley. I saw that sitting there and I was like, is that cilantro? That's parsley. That is smelling like, oh yeah. And this is our finished product. We got garlic parmesan drumsticks with a little side salad. So we're gonna give this a shot. We're gonna give this a try. We'll see how we get on this one. Oh my gosh. Just a minute. Are you gonna, I'm gonna go ahead I'm and go already, for it. But we're gonna try it right here. I'm already expecting a little. Oh. Oh man. The chicken is cooked just perfect. With the bone in mm -hmm. and the dark meat, you have a little bit to play with, but you do have to cook it a long time in order to get it all the way cooked through. But it, it doesn't dry out as fast as, say, if you're working with breasts or whatnot. It's really moist. It's not super dry at all. moist. Super moist, but you still have a little bit of crispiness onto the on the, the skin. But the meat itself is super super moist. I think we did a. I think we did a winner here. Mm. Mm. Winner winner chicken dinner. All right. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Somehow. I just had a feeling you might go there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, if it makes you happy, you got to be happy. So I want to thank you today for joining us on Kitchen Counseling. Yeah, thank you. And thank I want you. you to remember Super Moist. I think we did a, I think we did a winner here. Mm. Mm. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I, somehow, I just had a feeling you might go there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey. If it makes you happy, you got to be happy. So I want to thank you today for joining us on Kitchen Counseling. Yeah, thank you. And thank I want you. you to remember, remember my four F's to accentuate life. And that's family, friends, fun, and food. Mm. All right. If you enjoyed what you saw, 
Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. We'll see you next time. Take care. And there we go. I think that went really well.